In the last video we began our discussion of electronics with voltage and I kind of made it seem as though we were going to systematically go from one topic to the next, voltage, current, resistance. Uh, but in this video I think what's going to happen is I'm going to bounce back and forth between current and resistance because I think it's kind of difficult to explain one without the other. They're too closely related. So our guy is back in the picture here and let's say that he's as dumb as he looks and we're going to ask him to take this piece of wire this is just a single wire the ends are orange because I was trying to show them as exposed copper with some insulation so this is just a piece of wire and let's say we were going to ask him to place it right across this battery here right in the last video we talked about how this battery is a source of electrical potential energy right between the, the the negative and the positive leads so no work is necessarily being done there's just a bunch of potential sitting there um, and this is a copper wire with some insulation around it if we were to put this across these leads what do you think would happen before I tell you what I think would happen, I'm going to introduce a new concept to you. It's something that you've probably heard of before, and that is Ohm's Law. It's very simple. Ohm's Law is a simple equation. It is voltage equals current times resistance and the way it's sometimes shown is in a little triangle format here and the reason it's shown this way V is for voltage, I is for current, R is for resistance the reason it's shown this way is because you can solve for any one part of this equation if you have the other two. So voltage equals current times resistance, I times R. Resistance equals voltage divided by current, and current equals voltage divided by resistance. So this is a useful little cheat sheet. Uh, it's pretty rare that you'll have to use this in the field. I'm sure there'll be people that disagree with me, but um, it's a it's good to it's good to have a working knowledge of that just you know understand the concept so in this example I just asked you a question what's going to happen when we take this piece of wire and put it across this 12 volt battery well a piece a tiny piece of copper wire like this has almost no resistance if I were to take the meter that we had in the last um, in the last video set it to resistance and meter the resistance of this copper wire it's going to be pretty close to zero it might be 0 0.1 or, or something like that but it's going to be pretty close to zero well if we know that voltage equals current times resistance we know the voltage here we know the resistance would be pretty close to zero and current is what is really doing the work in a circuit or I should say it's the measure of how much work is being done now I'm sure there will be people that will split hairs with that description as well <coughs> excuse me which is why I in the last video mentioned I'm, I'm not I wasn't that anxious to do a video on uh, electricity because there's people that can explain it better than I can but you're listening to me so um, current is, you know, you could have a thousand volts, but if you have damn near in, infinite resistance, there's not going to be much current in a, in a circuit, right? In this case, we only have 12 volts. If you have almost no resistance, you have almost nothing resisting the flow of current through this circuit. Once he puts this piece of wire on these two leads, that's a complete circuit current is trying to flow from positive to negative in this batter in this battery 
as long as there's not too much resistance preventing it from doing so. So let's say that, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. Let's just say that if we were to meter this wire, it would be 0 0.1 ohms. So if we know the voltage is 12, sorry, I'm trying my pen again. The resistance, 0 0.1 ohms. What is I? If we do 120, I'm not sure how much of this you can see. What did we say? Divided by, I'm sorry, not 120, 12, 12 volts divided by 0 0.1 equals 120 amps. Amps is a measurement of current. So <clears throat> if you know anything at all about electricity, you know that is a ton of amperage. And there's no way this battery is going to be rated for that much. There's no way the wire is going to be rated for that much. So what specifically would happen if we were to just connect this wire to that battery? Something's going to blow up. I don't know if the wire is going to burst first or the battery is going to blow up. Probably a little bit of both. There will be char marks around the terminals. But essentially, a circuit with no resistance allows for infinite current at least as limited by the source of the power so in a battery that's a little bit that's kind of easy to understand um, in the case of AC voltage in your home that's going to be limited by a circuit breaker or something like that and maybe maybe we'll get into that in the future but that's kind of the point of fuses and circuit breakers they're rated to be higher than, and maybe I'll get into that just real quick now. Imagine instead of just just landing this, um, imagine instead of just landing this, uh, I used the wrong, oh no, I didn't. Right here, we instead attached some sort of a fuse. I don't know the actual symbol for a fuse, but you can imagine, you know, you had the little glass fuse here. Well, if that was rated for even five amps, and you put that in line as soon as this touches boom that thing's gonna blow and that's the point is to because it's trying to protect the components of the circuit by opening up the circuit effectively when too much current is flowing through so I wasn't planning on getting into fuses there but y you get the idea I think now let's say this guy is even dumber than he looks and he still trusts you after you told him to put a piece of wire across the battery leads. Now you're going to tell him to wire up this light bulb and he trusts you. Well this time he's going to be okay. We're going to give him some wire. He's going to wire negative to a negative terminal. He's going to wire positive to a positive terminal. And what do we think is going to happen? Well, the light bulb's going to come on, assuming this is a bulb rated for 12 volts. Well, now I'm going to use some numbers that I'm just making up, essentially. Let's say the resistance of this light bulb is 1,000 ohms, okay? So, um, 1 kilo ohm would be a more realistic way to say that. Um, and I'm going to start getting into the meter readings of these things because it's important it's a common mistake I see people make when they're newer is not understanding the difference between say 1 ohm 1 K ohm or kilo ohm and 1 mega ohm or it shows up on your meter as 1 M um, those are dramatically different numbers but if you don't know what that means it you know it's it's well it's meaningless and it's important when you're metering so you know I've seen people with a mega ohm that think that that's there's, you know, there's, maybe they have a mega ohm of resistance to ground, and they think of a ground fault because there's something showing up on their meter. Well, that's, I believe it's a million ohms, so it's effectively nothing. Um, anyway, I digress. So we were saying that this is a 1K light bulb, I think. Um, eh, shoot. So the light bulb's 1K. I got away from my pen. Um, 
So if we use Ohm law, Ohm's law, we know we have 12 volts. Um, we don't know current, so what is I? And 1K is 1,000, right? So we're going to do, let's pull up our calculator again. We wanted to do 12 divided by 1,000. So 12 divided by 1,000 equals 0 0.012. That's how many amps would be flowing in this circuit. That seems reasonable. So 0 0.0. 0 0.012. That would be, that's not 12 milliamps, right? No, that is 12 milliamps. If it were here, it would be 120 milliamps. So that's 12 little m, big A. 12 milliamps would be flowing through this circuit with a 1K light bulb. So we're discussing the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance. And I'm going to jump to an analogy that I did not think I was going to use, but I drew this picture probably six years ago when I was initially planning on making this video, and it would be a shame for it to go to waste. So the water analogy is not perfect, but I think it's useful to help people picture what's going on. So in this analogy, we have a swimming pool, or at least my depiction of a swimming pool. And in that case, the swimming pool would be the voltage. This is the potential, right? This pool of water, let's say it's 20,000 gallons, is the potential. It's just sitting there. Then we've got a little hose through a little hole in the pool that is just draining to the ground. And so the hose in this analogy would be the resistance. So this is what is resisting the flow of water out to ground, right? And the amount of water that's then allowed to flow through the hose would be the current. So if we had a bigger hose, that would be less resistance, which would allow more water to flow. If we had a smaller hose, that would be resisting the flow of water even more. And so less current would be flowing through it. And the reason I think that's a little bit easier to picture is just because it's something we've all seen, right? You, you can picture different diameters of hoses, different size bodies of water like pools or um, kiddie pools or whatever. So anyway, more than anything, I just didn't want this drawing to go to waste.